5 to 11 servings of bread, cereal, or rice. What? 3 to 5 of vegetables and 4 of fruits. Is their antioxidants and fiber help you to digest. If you were to examine your skin or your hair or any different part of your body, what you would tend to find is you tend to find lots of these different types of bacteria. So what I'm circling here are all different types of bacteria. Now where bacteria usually brings fear to us because we're quite scared. So and we think these bacteria are quite scary. But we should know that there's actually a difference between good bacteria and bad bacteria. So what I drew here is we've got these evil, crazy ones. These are the bad bacteria. But generally we have lots of good bacteria. And we actually have many more good bacteria than bad bacteria. These are actually the good bacteria. So what we should know generally is we should know the definition of what makes something a good bacteria and what makes something a bad bacteria. And this is what this dot point is all about. So I'll read the actual dot point. It says, identify, which means name, identify the conditions under which an organism is described as a pathogen. So we should know when something is actually called, when something is good and when something is bad. In this case, we're going to talk about when something is bad for us. And the actual dot point says, organism. So remember, organism is just any living thing. So we should name the conditions under which a living thing is described as a pathogen. And what you know is this here. This is your definition of pathogen. So you should know this definition. And a pathogen is just any organism or infective agent. And I'm going to cover why we also need to talk about infective agents. But any organism or infective agent that lives in or on other organism and causes disease. So there are two parts that you should know. So first of all, the most important one is that any organism that causes disease is considered a pathogen. So it has to cause disease, that's one of the conditions. And the other one, it has to live in or on another organism. So it has to live in or on an other organism. And the reason why that's important, I mean, if you, for example, have you know, bacteria or a fungi or a parasite, whatever else, if you have that, that thing I just mentioned, I just realized I wrote cause, cause. It's meant to be cause disease. But yeah, if you have anything that is causing disease, but it doesn't actually come onto our skin or into our body, then why does it might cause disease if it doesn't actually invade us? It's not going to cause any problems. So it has to both be able to cause disease and live in or on us for that to be called a pathogen. Now, why did the actual definition of pathogen, why did it have both the word organism and effective agent in it? Remember, the word organism was any living thing. So a parasite, would that be a living thing? Well, mosquitoes, tapeworms, ticks, all these are parasites, and they're most definitely living. So we can definitely call a parasite an organism. Would a bacteria be considered to be living? Well, they can replicate, they can do lots of things by themselves. Basically, anything that is needed to define a living thing, a bacteria has as well. So we consider bacteria to be organisms as well. And then the fungi, well, fungi, again, they can also reproduce, they can survive by themselves, they can feed and everything else. So just like the other ones beforehand, a fungi or a fungus is also an organism. So these are all organisms, but the other two here, these are actually a bit different because in this case, if we were to ask, can a virus actually replicate? Well, we would actually have to say, if it were by itself, no, it can't. Viruses have to have a host. So virus has to invade a host, has to invade a host for it to be able to reproduce. And we're going to cover, cover viruses in much more detail soon. But it's actually fascinating because what they have to do is they have to invade a host, inject its DNA, and use the host cell to reproduce. So that's one of the reasons why we don't consider a virus a living thing, which is why we call we have both the organism and the infective agent here, because a virus is actually not an organism, it's an infective agent because it's non-living. It's an infective agent because it's non-living. As opposed to the other ones, they're all living. And what is a prion? Again, I'm going to cover prions very soon, but a prion is just a protein. And whilst proteins are extremely important for our survival, we need to have proteins, but a protein by itself is not living because you need to be able to reproduce, move, consume food, and all that kind of stuff for you to be able to be considered a living thing. And proteins definitely don't reproduce them by themselves. They don't, you know, they don't f eat or anything else. So prions are also non-living. But because, but because they can cause disease and they can also invade other organisms, by definition they are a pathogen. But they're just an infective agent. So they're an infective agent, but they're still classified as a pathogen. 
And one thing that I've not mentioned yet that we also need to be able to define or the condition under which an organism is described as a pathogen. For example, if you have bacteria which are about to invade your body, let's say you have one bacteria in your nose which is wanting to invade your body. If this bacteria were to invade by itself, it might actually die really quickly and nothing would happen. But if we were to wait for a while and wait for more to come, these can actually communicate. These can communicate between each other so they know how many are around them usually. If they wait in your nose, which is usually quite safe for it, they wait for a while for their numbers to have increased, either by you inhaling more or by then duplicating. After a while, they might say, okay, we have enough numbers now. So if we try to invade now, we might survive long enough for there to be a disease that has caused. So these might actually then invade after a while, once they have enough numbers, and then cause disease. So the third part was they have to have high enough numbers. So high enough numbers for them to actually have an effect. Now that might be, you know, for a mosquito, a mosquito could by, be by itself and then transmit the actual disease by itself. Whereas bacteria often have to wait for high numbers and fungi sometimes as well. So we go over top one again. It was name, so identify with name, name the conditions under which an organism is described as a pathogen. Remember the definition of pathogen? So pathogen was any organism or infective agent that lives in or on other organisms and causes disease. So first condition was it has to be able to cause disease. Second condition was it has to have the in, living in or on or other organisms. So for example, that could be us, the other organism. And the third point we said was it has to have high enough numbers for them to actually have an effect. If all these are present, then these are pathogens. But I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.